Look at me. Sure. I'm the captain now. Hello everybody and welcome back to Space Talk. I'm Hujuana and today we're looking at space pirates, specifically what would make a good spaceship for one. But first let's define what a pirate is and what they do so we can figure out what sort of ship they need. Simply put, they rob other ships of their cargo and valuable goods, though what counts as being valuable may not be what you expect. Specialist ship equipment and medical supplies or maybe even just food is going to be more valuable to a pirate than a big old pile of shiny jewels. What are they going to do with that? Where are they going to fence it? Currency itself was a common thing to steal back in the romanticised era of piracy, but that's not possible in a sci-fi setting that lacks physical currency. There might be something of similar value, like Star Trek's gold-pressed latinum, but again, there's the issue of actually using it. It might be tagged and known as being stolen. In a similar vein is capturing ships for ransom, which I think is how a lot of modern piracy works. Thanks to rapid telecommunications and instant money transfers, it's quick and easy to demand a ransom from the insurance company on the other side of the world, and that can easily scale out to sci-fi piracy. Capturing ships for use as a pirate vessel is also a possibility, though that brings up the question of what to do with the crew. It's important here to understand that pirates killing people might not happen much, because it's just bad for business. If word got around that pirates were killers, then their targets would fight back to not be captured. A quick, bloodless surrender is best for everyone. With these things in mind, capturing cargo, ransoming ships and avoiding casualties, we can work out the ideal specs for a pirate vessel. The first and foremost thing to consider is speed. A pirate ship needs to be able to run down its prey, but also wants to be able to get away from any reprisals from anti-piracy efforts. The extra wrinkle for sci-fi is faster than light travel, especially if it's a built-in drive as opposed to something like a gateway, as drives could complicate piracy a great deal, or even render it entirely impossible. You can't steal a ship's stuff if it can just jump away, or if you can't interact with them while in warp or whatever. Of course, that's all dependent on the highly variable way that superluminal tech functions in any particular setting. Maybe you can move up to a ship already in warp and force your target out, or maybe hyperspace works similarly to real space. Or maybe it has only specific access points, which, much like the gateway style of FTL, leads to natural choke points and shipping lanes between them. Perfect places to pounce on a target, but also a good chance to meet an anti-piracy patrol. If FTL renders ships basically immune to piracy, then fixed locations might be the target instead. Things like small surface settlements and space stations with poor defences. But that has its own risks, and if you hit the same places over and over, they're going to start building up defences. So space raiders will need to be constantly on the move. But equally, that applies to ship targeting pirates as well. Too much activity in one region is going to attract piracy suppression measures. If raiding stationary targets doesn't sound like your jam, then a way around FTL preventing piracy is for pirates to prevent FTL. Some ship system that can block an FTL drive, or to force someone in FTL out of it, right into the jaws of an ambush. Such things are common in space games with a competitive element, like EVE Online or Elite Dangerous. That's pirate ship propulsion, weapons are up next, and these might have some big differences to what a warship of similar size will be equipped with due to different end goals. A warship wants to render its targets combat ineffective or even destroy it entirely. In contrast, a pirate ship wants their target intact to rob or ransom it, so they might carry weapons meant to disable, preferably non-destructively. Remember, a crew that fears for its life is going to fight back, and that is an immense risk for a pirate vessel. Because of that, avoiding a fight entirely is also going to be an attractive option. If you can intimidate someone into surrendering, then that's the best outcome for all parties involved especially the pirate vessel as it may not have any safe ports to return to for repairs or anyone to come looking for them if they send a distress call. This bit is yet another reason why the pirate's behaviour and reputation is important. Another consideration here is how easy it is for civilians to arm their ships. Is it Star Wars where every tramp freighter seems like it's packing enough guns to take on a capital ship? Or something where weapons are rare? In the case of the former, avoiding combat entirely is going to be very wise, but equally a pirate will need even more weapons to scare an armed opponent. 
As for the latter, well it won't take much to scare an unarmed captain into raising the white flag. Both targets and pirates could also be packing fake weaponry, as both sides are trying to avoid getting into fights and rely on intimidation to achieve that. No matter which way things go, the last step is likely going to be boarding, in order to ransack the poor victim's ship or to gain full control of it for ransoming. But I get the impression that boarding a hostile enemy spacecraft is going to be far more trouble than it's worth. There's just so many risks like engine plumes you can be tortured by, or ship collisions causing damage that a pirate crew cannot repair, and that's just trying to connect up docking ports. If you try to do a bit of hostile exterior boarding via EVA, then those issues are even more dangerous. Not to mention being shot at! It's way less trouble to have the victim surrender and power down. Again, the reputation of pirates in a setting is very important here. You want your unwilling docking partner to at least act predictably. Another option is to use subterfuge, like using fake distress calls to lure someone in. Then, when they board to help you, you attack them. Come to think of it, this is another good way to get around FTL potentially making normal piracy very challenging. Boarding isn't always necessary though. EVE Online and Star Sector's piracy works just fine despite them not really including boarding in the game. Instead, pirates demand ransoms or just blow stuff up and scavenge whatever is left. And in Star Trek, having tractor beams and transporters means you can grab a ship and stop it leaving without ever needing to actually board, but equally, transporters make hostile boarding actions that much easier. If the desired outcome is to capture the ship for the pirate's use, who is going to crew it? Do they bring extra people along in the first place, or take on the captured crew if they want to join the pirates? They might very well be open to the idea, as pirate crews historically are far more egalitarian than you might realise, potentially more so than the actual navies of the day. They might earn more too. Pirates were also surprisingly professional, a concept I suspect doesn't translate to sci-fi because of the pervasive idea of the hyper-competent crews of navy ships. Space pirates end up contrasting that. Another really common thing to see is pirate infrastructure. Captured space stations are the usual thing here, serving as safe havens and trading locations, essentially being a hub for a sort of pirate nation. Though anything more established than this starts pushing some boundaries, because a station that is growing its own food, making its own ships, producing its own goods isn't really a pirate place anymore, is it? But without those things, pirate stations are going to be struggling to meet basic needs. It's hard to survive just on stealing, and traders are understandably going to avoid the place. But what if the pirates are being supplied by nation-state, in exchange for causing issues for that nation's enemies? From targeted raids to tacit understandings to not touch certain ships, there's a whole lot of sneaky underhanded dealings that could be going on. There might even be a legal element to this, where a nation gives out letters of mark to privateers, essentially giving them permission to do all the usual piratey things, as long as it's against the nation's enemies. That also works for piracy suppression measures, giving legal cover for people to go hunting pirates. I'm surprised there isn't more of this going on in Star Wars, but I guess there are bounty hunters? Do they get sent against pirates all that much? I'm not saying these ideas are the only way of doing things. Consider them a series of guidelines than actual rules. Plenty of fiction does pirates in their own unique and fun ways, and it's up to you to decide how to include them in your own creations. You can support Space Dock by joining our Patreon where you can get our frigate and space fighter design reference books. Alternatively, you can support us directly through YouTube by becoming a channel member. Thanks to our supporters and thank you for watching.